The Life of Tomatonio, Part 1, Tomatoes Leaving the Nest Once upon a time, there was a tomato named Tomatonio. He was proud to be born a tomato, and he strove to be a great tomato so he could achieve his dream of being eaten one day. Tomatonio worked hard every day to make his dream a reality, and the farmer raising him continuously gave Tomatonio words of encouragement. I'm so proud of you. I hope you can grow up to be a delicious tomato and make people happy. Tomatonio never stopped pursuing his dream, and he eventually grew to be a plump, brilliantly red tomato. However, a lazy tomato mocked Tomatonio for his dream. Ha, working hard is so not cool. It's much cooler to slack off. Tomatonio ignored the lazy tomato's words. There was also a skinny crow who quarreled with Tomatonio since the day they met, when the crow had come to steal tomatoes. Tomatonio would proudly share his dream, telling the crow, One day, I'm going to become a delicious tomato dish and make people happy. Only for the crow to mock him and reply, Even if you made it to the market, you'd either be left unsold on the shelves or go straight into the trash. Despite these words, Tomatonio was determined to accomplish his dream, and no one could break his will. At last, harvest day arrived. Tomatonio's heart filled with anticipation, for he'd been waiting his whole life for this. Soon, however, the clear sunny sky became covered by dark, ominous clouds, and the winds began to blow. It was a typhoon. All the other tomatoes were helplessly blown away by powerful winds. However, Tomatonio desperately clung to his vine with all his might. I won't give up until I achieve my dream of being eaten. Somehow, he managed to survive the stormy night. And when morning came, the typhoon had started to dissipate. Tomatonio was relieved to have survived, though he was quite upset at harvest day being ruined. He then felt something strange about his body. Filled with dread, he looked down. Oh no, his once plump, brilliantly red body had been devastated, after enduring the storm. Part 2. Tomatonio Falls Off the Vine Someone called out to Tomatonio as he stared at his own body in shock. It was the lazy tomato, who had also survived the storm due to its small size. (laughs) Ha, nobody will want to eat you like that now, the lazy tomato jeered. Despite this, Tomatonio was still confident about his body, from his brilliantly red color to his deliciousness. But at that moment, one last wind from the typhoon passed through the field, turning up dirt and dust. Tomatonio desperately clung on to his vine again, but this time, his efforts were in vain, for the vine holding him finally snapped. Carried by the wind, Tomatonio tumbled toward the forest. His brilliantly red body became scuffed, and scratched, and covered in dirt. It seemed to go on forever. He finally came to a stop, and found himself in the middle of a vast forest. As Tomatonio sat there, stunned, he heard footsteps nearby, and glanced around for the sound. He found himself face to face with a powerful boar, notorious for destroying crops. Huh, there's a delicious looking tomato on the ground here, the boar said moving his salivating mouth closer. While Tomatonio wasn't exactly thrilled to be in the boar's presence, he was delighted at the boar's words, thinking that he'd be eaten. However, the boar instead seized the lazy tomato, who had also been blown away by the typhoon's last wind. The healthy-looking lazy tomato grinned with pride as it vanished inside the boar's mouth. But soon the boar cried, Gross! and promptly spat what was left of the lazy tomato back out. I've never had a tomato taste this bad. The boar then glanced over at Tomatonio. That one looks even worse. I know it isn't delicious. He left the two tomatoes on the forest floor. Tomatonio was deeply hurt by the boar's words. Please don't judge me by my looks. I know I taste delicious. His pained voice faded away into nothingness and was swallowed by the dark forest. Time passed, and Tomatonio found his freshness quickly fading, but he was still determined. I'm not giving up. No matter where I am, 
I'm still proud of being a tomato. I'm going to be the most delicious tomato ever and bring happiness to whoever eats me. Tomatonio managed to cheer himself up with his own words and, using the last of his strength, cleaned up his wounds and tightened himself up. Suddenly, his mud-covered skin regained its radiant luster and reflected the dazzling color of sunset. After a short time, a black shadow appeared in the orange sky and descended in front of Tomatonio. Part 3. A Fitting End It was the skinny crow from before who was always mean to Tomatonio. What's Mr. Goody Two-Shoes doing in a place like this? The crow snarked. And you've gotten awfully ugly since the last time I saw ya. But Tomatonio faced the crow, his face still filled with determination. Go ahead and laugh, but I still haven't given up on my dream, he said defiantly. The crow smiled devilishly. I knew you'd say that. You just don't know when to give up, do ya? Suddenly, the crow seized the vine on top of Tomatonio's head and flew high into the air, soaring across the orange sky to a destination unknown. The other crows and forest animals gazed in awe at the flying crow. Why aren't you eating that tomato? They would ask, and the crow had a response for each one of them. Instead of a fancy gourmand like myself, I know the perfect person for an ugly tomato like him. Tomatonio worried about where he was being taken, but nevertheless thanked the crow for rescuing him from the forest. The crow only scoffed coldly in response and continued flying. After some time, Tomatonio finally succumbed to his exhaustion and fell asleep, entrusting the crow with his life. The crow spent the entire night flying, and soon Tomatonio awoke to the cool morning fog. They finally arrived at a restaurant owned by a legendary chef. The crow deposited Tomatonio on the restaurant's kitchen counter and perched on the windowsill. This place is perfect for an extraordinary tomato like you, the crow said. Then he scoffed again. <laughs> I must be an idiot. I can't believe I actually respect your determination. Suddenly, the crow fell off the windowsill. A soft thud was heard shortly after. Mr. Crow! Tomatonio cried out. The crow had stopped stealing from the field since meeting Tomatonio, though his new lifestyle left him physically weak. Tomatonio felt sad for the crow. Thank you, Mr. Crow. You were a good friend to me. As he reflected on his memories with the crow, the legendary chef and the other chefs entered the kitchen. What's this? On top of the kitchen counter was a hideous-looking tomato, covered in leaves and dirt. We ought to throw this ugly thing out, one chef said. The other chefs agreed and made to grab Tomatonio, but the legendary chef stopped them. No, wait just a moment, the legendary chef said. This is no ordinary tomato. Look not at its appearance, but its substance. The legendary chef scooped up Tomatonio gently and washed him carefully. It may not look like a good tomato, but I'm certain that this is an extraordinary and delicious tomato. I can make a great dish out of this. The other chefs murmured at these words, and the legendary chef immediately started prepping a meal with the determined tomato, who finally had his dream realized. And thus, Tomatonio was reborn into a great dish, the children who despise tomatoes would grow to love tomatoes after eating this great dish and be filled with happiness, and they would never forget how delicious this tomato tasted for the rest of their lives.